Okay, I apologize for that. I had to uh, stop the video because the video that I had had subtitles for everything. Like, it was making, it was saying at the bottom, ticking sounds for the clock. I'm like, what? So apparently that was the closed caption version. But yeah, I managed to find one that don't have the captions on it. So yeah, we're good. So anyway, let's resume. Uh, now let's resume this episode. Start video. Three, two, one click. when it comes to gifts from the heart, but this is an emergency, right? Yeah. Discord? <laughs> a little help! Discord! Discord! That was quick. Uh, that escalated quickly. Good idea. <clears throat> Captain Woods, are you prepared to enter the world of ogres and oubliettes? The Zorb! Summer adventures. Ah! How we storm the ramparts of Wizard's castle to reclaim Calico's ring of imperceptibility. You did summon me for a rousing guy's night of ogres and obliettes, did you not? Uh, sort of, but do you think you could magically hurry up this pie real quick first? You seem to be mixing up the Lord of Chaos with a second-rate clown magician for hire. Wait! This needs to go in the mail today, or it'll never get to Sugar Bell in time for Hearts and Hoofs Day. What? <laughs> Please, can't you see that that holiday is a commercialized ruse? Pushed on you by the greeting card industry. <clears throat> Fine. You owe me for this. Keep your eye on the pie. It's magic time. Oh no. And they're all dead. The end. Well, now for the review. Okay, um, Fall 3, yeah, okay, um, so, I'm a little confused with this episode because, uh, this is set before Hearts and Hose Day, um, okay, a little late, isn't it? I'm just wondering what's going to happen this here. Uh, palatable. Well, pies really are Sugar Bell's thing, but I think that makes us all the more special. It shows you're interested in what she cares about. Yep. And he's planning a big <laughs> break up, break down. It was my idea to bake the invitation inside. Please do not tell me they're going to break up. Happy Hearts and Hooves Day, Sugar Bell. Meet me in my barn at sunset for a surprise. Pretty clever. Huh? Yep. <laughs> oh, I can imagine how fan art will take you, take advantage of that. Aw, Sugar Bell. See? Well, you two certainly have bought into this romance nonsense, hook, line, and sinker. For a formerly friendless immortal despot, you're pretty cynical. <laughs> <laughs> and love, like all things warm and fuzzy, isn't real. Aw, oh, come on. You act tough, but deep down you're a softie. I mean, you don't have tea with Fluttershy every weekend because you like tea. But I do like tea. Every tea. All the teas. Chamomile, Earl Grey, Green, White, Yellow, Mate, Lemon, Ginger, Chai, Spearmint, Peppermint, Hibiscus, <laughs> Cinnamon, Pumpkin, Spice. Mm. You don't slaughter shy, you just don't want to admit it. Well, Big Mac Mills is incredibly romantic gesture. I'll show you the splendors of hearts and hooks. Oh, oh no, this is backfire. I can prove you believe in love. Fine. Call it a gentleman's wager. Loser mows my lawn for eternity. <laughs> is it like a riding mower or tweezers? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Post office. Should we get it mixed up? Oh no. 
Oh, she's, she's adorable. So is she. So is she. Uh-oh. Oh no, oh no, oh no. The cutie mark crusaders is now in session. First order of business, helping my big brother decorate the barn for his big date with Sugar Bell tonight. And hello. <laughs> it seems like every pony's got some pony special but us. When's it gonna be our turn? Oh great. Huh? First it was the cutie marks, now you want boyfriends. Huh? One step at a time, girl. Smudged, but it looks like it's addressed to Bill? Hmm. Sweetie Oh my god! Hey, Bill! Oh no! Oh you You don't think could it be? Hang on a minute. Mysterious package. Oh no. Secret admirer deal. You got a secret admirer! Oh no! <laughs> hey, she's back! Oh, that's adorable! Jeez, uh, that's also cute. Love is in the air, Discord. Look at all these happy That's adorable. Girls. How can they be happy if they aren't playing ogres and oubliettes? <laughs> There's a great dragon lord once wrote to his beloved, I love you with the utmost clarity. You wrote that to Rarity, didn't you? My sweet, sweet Rarity. Are See, you I told you. Of course, love is something, something, and Discord is great. I don't know. Can we play O and O now? Sure. <laughs> oh, and O, it's like, it's like, wow. What is Sugar Bell doing in Pony? Hello. What is Sugar Bell doing in Ponyville? What's she doing in town so early? Well, Sugar Bell, I'm sure Big Mac won't be expecting it. <gasps> She's planning her own romantic surprise for Big Mac. Let me guess, she's pregnant. before Big Mac's ready with his surprise. We've got to warn him. I'd freak out if that was actually that that was actually the case. Whoa! The souffle. Mid back. back. I mean, Big Mac. We just saw Sugar Bell. She's at Sugar Cube Corner, but I think she's on her way over here now. You gotta keep her away from here until the barn's finished. <gasps> yep. I wonder what she has planned for him. <laughs> we don't have to wonder. Will you warn me next time you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Watch out! Oh, she hasn't seen him yet. Take note, Discord. This is what love is all about. Uh oh. Spike, love is about spying in the bushes. <laughs> you want. Eh. Big Mac's face and tell it's worked before. <laughs> I hope he'll be okay without me. <laughs> Good job, dude. Oh, hey. We're just. That's fine. Hush. Oh. How should I tell Big Mac tonight? You won't need to come visit me in my village anymore. We need to talk. Just be honest with them. You're right. Okay, we're finished. She's not breaking up with him. I'm thinking it's right. something else. She did surprise you. <laughs> I'm thinking it's something else. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh great, now he's drinking. Maybe they're really not. Maybe we're finished. Was about the day. Our ponies say that, right? Like like She's not breaking up with him. That's finished cuz it's today. Maybe not that. That is the you are royally screwed if you don't shut the f up face. She has to leave him in charge of his shop while she Dude, apprentices with Mrs. Gay. You really need to sober up. Like, no, your eyes are totally bloodshot. Need you to you to need some anymore. clear because eyes right now. She'll already be here. Nah, I don't even buy that one. A lot of help, dude. She takes pie bacon seriously. Why did I even 
try. I bet she thought I, I was making fun of her. Oh, I hate seeing you like this, Big Mac. And over a girl, no less. I'm calling an emergency guys night right now to cheer you up. Just <laughs> Thank you. Besides, the Discord. We can't have you ruining any more of my thousand-year-old monogrammed handkerchiefs. <laughs> silk, you know. <laughs> Class is now in session. Lesson one: Nothing can break your heart if you only love yourself. You've got to show Good every point. pony that you're too cool to be bothered with so-called love. Observe. This is how cool guys lean against things. When you see a guy leaning against a thing looking this cool, you think, wow, that guy doesn't have a care in Equestria. Not a guy who leans on things that cool. Well, I don't think leaning's gonna help. Am I doing it right? <laughs> like you discord we can't put on a front and pretend not to love it's impossible lesson two plenty of ponies in the pasture right big mac i know plenty just how to pasture. make you forget all about sugar bell you said her name okay, okay we finished decorating the barn for big mac which means we got the rest of the day to ourselves well I'll see rose hanging out with, with uh, lily Button mash. Did you to send any packages to me recently? It's okay to say no. I won't be offended. <laughs> she, 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 she's totally not into them. That was awesome. I love that. Sir McBiggins meets Skelenor. She's a level 18 bone warrior in Squizzard's mage army, but only to pay off skeleton student level. That's cool. Get to know each other. Why don't you? Wow. You're really going all out to cheer up Big Mac. <laughs> you look like Gandorf. <laughs> Yes, yes, I'm amazing. Anyway, since we're in the neighborhood, care for a quick game of ogres and obliettes? <laughs> like I've been wanting to play all week. I take it back. I'm helping our friend first and foremost. See for yourself. <laughs> Wait, that really works? Yep. I think he's showing her a picture of Sugar Bell. What? And now he's crying. No, 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 he's not. Let me see that. Don't touch it. I'm looking. Give me it. Cut it out, Discord. Quit it. See the thing where her, her nose would wrinkle when she laughed? Right there. In that hole where your nose used to be. I never told her how much I loved wrinkled nose, cutie face. And now I never will. <laughs> I think it's an interesting uh, dynamic here. You know what I do when I have a problem too big to solve? I hide from it. When she can't find you, she'll realize how much she misses you. Plus, if she can't find you, she can't break up with you. Yep. Oh boy. <laughs> I don't get it. We asked every stallion in Ponyville. Ugh, there's gotta be some pony we're missing. Some pony obvious. Some pony rat in front of our noses. Oh well, at least the barn's looking great for Big Mac's date. Too bad there won't be a date. Sugar Bell is so lucky to have a non-secret admirer like Big Mac. Well, she certainly doesn't seem to have appreciated it. I bet she's gonna take one look at this barn and say, what did I ever do to deserve this? Yes, what did she do to deserve this? She broke my heart. Well, not yet, technically. In fact, she can't break your heart if you break hers first. Yep. Oh, Thanks no. for the tour of Ponyville, Mrs. Cake. Oh, no. Oh, my pleasure. I'm up to surprise Big Mac with the news. Imagine the look on his face when I tell him. 
We need to talk. Oh, dear you're pregnant. Me, no. <laughs> you're don't, pregnant. Don't say it that way. Or you'll think you're breaking up with him. Break up with him? Never. Why, without my favorite delivery pony, <laughs> I couldn't imagine being happy ever again. <laughs> Who knows that? Good. Save your mix. Oh, crap. That's what <laughs> I always say. <laughs> He's a good listener, that pony. I promise you, no mix-up. We need to talk. Uh -oh. oh my freaking god! Oh no. I know why you're here. You do? But I have something to tell you She's pregnant. first. Oh, can I go first? I'm gonna be Stop. A mother. Why don't we tell each other on three? One? It's over. What's over? You and me. It's over. Uh, what? We're breaking up. Oh my gosh. I don't understand. Why are you breaking up with me? And why are you leaning like that? I don't know. Big Mac, please talk to me. I, you, uh, this is why I don't like talking. Words can hurt. Words hurt. Goodbye, Sugar Bell. <laughs> oh my gosh. <sighs> That's cute. Mud, mud, fire. That's cute. The Mac. Oh, thank goodness! You gotta help us with this. Dude, how long have you been not hiding? Oh. I should probably have said something. <laughs> I should go. Did ya? Did she? Are ya? Big Mac? What's going on? Where's Sugar Bell? Just go. But we worked so hard on this chart. I think we've almost cracked it. If you could just... Not right now. But I can't stand having a secret admirer who's too scared to tell me who he is. Maybe he doesn't like talking. Maybe he used to talk too much and it only ever got him into trouble. <sighs> what if you're right, Discord? What if love isn't real at all? I'm sorry, sweetie Belle. I'm just mad and I'm taking it out on you. That's okay. I bet it felt good to get it out, though. Actually, it did. I'm telling you how I felt just then. I gotta go. Big Mac, where are you going? I gotta talk to Sugar Bell. Discord, you gotta use your magic and... Guess you have better things to do. Big Mac's gonna need a miracle. <gasps> All the rotten luck. you just in time we both know I don't like to say much but I'm gonna say something now <sighs> even though I'm hurt I wouldn't trade this feeling for anything because it'd mean giving up the good times we had too and I only broke up with you because when you were gonna break up with me I respect your decision and you should know you'll always be in my heart I didn't want to break up with you but you said you don't need me to visit anymore. You said I'm gonna be on my own. I, I, I heard you said we're finished when I was hiding in the bushes. And that sounds worse than it is. <laughs> Big Mac, I was talking about my cousin. I have this wacky cousin who's never been on his own, but I have to let him run my shop on weekends. Which is why you won't be delivering to my village anymore. Because I'll already be here apprenticing with Mrs. Cake, who does that two days a week. <laughs> no, three. Wait till I tell Spike. I'd never break up with you. <laughs> oh. I suppose there's a lesson here somewhere about communication. <laughs> Talking instead of assuming or eavesdropping is wrong, wouldn't you say? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Face. You must be confused at my breaking up with you after you got my pie. What pie? 
you didn't get the pass in? Mm -mm. Or the invitation? Uh -uh. Well, in that case, allow <laughs> me to send you to a heart so day surprise. He's <laughs> <laughs> so adorable. Mind if we join you? Hearts and Hooves Day, Sugar Bell. Meet me. Sugar Bell? You have got to be pulling our hooves. It was all a mix up? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny. I've been sitting here feeling sorry for myself for not having a special pony on Hearts and Hooves Day, but remembering all the fun we had, I think I have two special ponies. My two best friends. Aww. <laughs> Another oh come on! Despite a bumpy start, and go back to go back go back to Big Mac and Sugar Bell. I want to say some more of that. Apparently, and a fair number of assumptions. But you have to admit, after seeing everything Big Mac went through, love is one hundred percent real. Seriously, Discord, come on! I can't believe you. Who do you think broke Sugar Bell's wagon wheel? Happy Hearts and Hooves Day! You did it. Old softy. <laughs> I knew you had a heart. Speaking of how great I am, are you busy? He's probably. The rest of the night? He's probably <laughs> like the doctor. He's probably got two of them. Going to reclaim itself, you know. Ogres and oubliettes. I thought you'd never ask. Oh, and just wondering, no biggie, but is Skeletor gonna be there? Spy. She's an imaginary one-dimensional paper cutout skeleton. Well, no pony's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this was a really adorable episode. And by far, this one is definitely one of my most favorite of season eight. This is definitely one of my most favorite of season eight. Definitely. Um... And there's a few different aspects to go over here because there's a few, there's definitely several different aspects to go over. Um, <clears throat> yeah, this one right here and the parent map. I mean, this one right here is definitely one of my most favorites. Um, the only nitpick that I can honestly say that I have against this episode is it is the only the only nitpick that I have have against this episode is there wasn't enough Big Mac and Sugar Bell in it. Like, there just wasn't enough of them in it. Um, I mean, I really did like that. You know, like the bits with the CMCs and with Discord and Spike. But I think that there could, you know, I personally think that the that the bit with uh, Sweetie Bell could have actually been panned out more to make another episode. Um panned out more to make another episode, and, you know, they could have done that as a separate episode on its own, um, and I think that they could have made this episode a little bit lengthier with Big Mac and, Sh and Sugar Bell, because, I mean, I, I mean, because me personally, it would have been cute to have seen Big Mac take Sugar Bell back to the barn and let her see the decorations and things like that, um, uh, and just see that little connection between them, and it would have been adorable to see them watching the sunset. Pardon me. You know, it would have been adorable to see them watching the sunset together. Heck, maybe even show Big Mac taking her to a special place, which would be the tree that his mom and dad uh, planted. You know, the intertwined heart-shaped tree. It would have been awesome if he would have taken her there, and they could have had like a picnic or something. Um, that would have been really beautiful. But like I said, that's the only nitpick. Uh, like, I, I, I adore this episode. It's definitely one of my most favorite of season 8. This right here episode is right up there with uh, the Mod and Mar Mudbrier episode. And I mean, th this this episode is honestly right up there with the Parent Map episode as one of my most favorite episodes of season 8. But like I said, it for me it did kind of feel a little bit cluttered. Because you had three different things going on at one time, and I mean, you have a 22-minute episode, you have, or like a 20-minute episode, 
and you have three different things going on at one time. You have pretty much Spike and Discord. You have Sugar Bell and Big Mac, and then you have the CMCs. And again, I think that the CMC concept could have been worked and panned out a little more and worked in its own episode um, and left out of this one. Or they could have just focused on that, like had Sweetie Belle and the rest of the CMCs find out that it, you know, first think that it was Big Mac that sent that. Um, but again, I really think that, you know, that there could have been more feature with Big Mac, with Big Mac and Sugar Bell. Um, for me personally, there just wasn't enough of it. Um, and, and like I said, I adore this episode. It's so beautiful. It's so sweet. It's so warm. But like I said, I can't help it. I'm a sucker for like the cartoon romance. I'm a sucker for it. And so for me, there just wasn't enough. And that's probably on my behalf. I know other people probably, you know, probably a lot of other people <clears throat> feel the exact opposite, <clears throat> pardon me, feel the exact opposite. They adore the episode as it is. Um, but me, like I said, I'm a sucker for the cartoon romance thing between cute characters, so for me, there wasn't enough of it, um, <clears throat> I did not get my, I did not get my fill with it, um, but it was really adorable, and there was a few different aspects to go over with this, now, the whole mix-up deal, uh, I have seen before, uh, it's not a new gimmick, I have seen it done before, but there's a few different things to go over, uh, story-wise, first off, the main concept story, which is Big Mac, <clears throat> uh, once, I mean, overhears, uh, Sugar Bell say, uh, say some things that he believes she's alluding to the concept of breaking up with him. And I've seen that gimmick before, you know, the misunderstanding. I have seen that before. It's not new. Uh, heck, I remember seeing kind of similar gimmicks, kind of like that, even as far back as Isle of Lucy back in, back in the 50s. So this isn't a new gimmick. It's certainly not an old gimmick. It's not a boring or dull gimmick. It does work. Um, but it re was really adorable to be able to see uh, to see that here and see it work out here in MLP. And like I said, Big Mac, <clears throat> he was the first afraid that Sugar Bell was going to break up with him. The adorable thing was that she wasn't. Like, she had no intentions of breaking up with him whatsoever. But Big Mac did not know that. He did not know that. He did not know she had no intentions of breaking up with him, that she still wanted to be with him, uh, and the thing was, Big Mac, it, you know, it was kind of a, a very, very, uh, a very similar concept. It's realistic in that here you have Big Mac, a guy who is in a bit of an emotional term, who is in an emotional turmoil because of believing that the girl that he's been with is going to break up with him. And so here he has two friends. He has two different friends who has two different ideas, two different perspectives on what he should do. Spike, who is trying to offer, you know, kind of offer ways to try to help Big Mac. Um, and then finally you have Discord, who is just flat out, like, break up with her first. You know, break up with her before she breaks up with you. And, again, it's realistic because that has happened before in real life. That, that you know, that really honestly has happened before in real life. And so, uh, so Big Mac decided he was going to... So, Big Mac decided to take Discord's advice, break up, break up with Sugar Bell first before she had a chance to break to break his heart. Um, and this tore Sugar Bell up. And then... At the end of it, Big Big Mac realized that he should have just communicated with her, been open about it, and honestly, Big Mac was really, really mature here. Big Mac was really mature and understanding. Like, he told her that even though, it, I mean, he, believing that she was going to break up with him, that he, he basically told her, I will always care, I will always care about you. Like, even if you want to break up with me, you will always be in my heart. And Big Mac was really mature, and honestly, Big Mac is more of a man than is, or more of a stallion than, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't deny this, I would never be able to say what Big Mac did. I'll be completely honest, I feel no shame, I probably should, but honestly, Big Mac, he handled this so maturely, and, I mean, he was able to stand his ground, and he was able to say it, and even though it was, he, even though it was tearing him up inside, he was still able to to tell to tell to tell Sugar Bell that. And like I said, Big Mac was more of a man than what I would be able to be in this situation. Like I honestly would not have it in me to say and do what Big Mac did. But 
getting back on track here, Big Mac realized, and Sugar Bell said it right here. I mean, she said it that there was a lack of communication, that they should have just communicated with each other, explained what was going on. <clears throat> and it's very true. I mean, this is honestly one of the key factors. This is one of the key factors in a, a relationship. Like, this is one of the building blocks. This is part of the foundation is communication. A healthy, good, a good, healthy relationship relies on open communication between each other, and <clears throat> they're still new in the relationship with each other. Um, so, you know, this is something that this is something that they learned. And honestly, like, you can't go into any, you can't go into any relationship and know everything that there's to know. There are things you're going to learn. There are th new things you're going to learn about each other. There are mistakes you're going to make. And you have to overcome those mistakes. You have to push past those mistakes. You learn from those mistakes and you use those to make you stronger together and move past. And <clears throat> so this was a situation, you know, for them. But like I said, this helped them, in my personal opinion, this helped them to be better. This, this strengthened their relationship. <clears throat> and now they're open with each other. They know, be honest, communicate, be open and, you know, c c communicate with each other what you're feeling, you know, what what you're thinking. And again, it's uh, any relationship that is healthy relies upon that. That is, I mean, that and trust and faithfulness, I mean, c communication, trust and faithfulness, that's really important key factors in a healthy relationship and, and a healthy friendship. So right here, this is something that they learned and... So they're better because of it. Like, yeah, this was a hiccup. This was a bump in the road. But then again, every single relationship and, and, and friendship goes through that. The key is to not let those drag you down. Push past it. Get over it. Get over the bump. Get through that hazard together, and it will make you stronger. And if you both want to stick it out and you both want to remain together, be it a relationship or a friendship, Moving past that together, working together, communicating, trusting each other, having faith, faith in each other, being loyal to each other, it helps to it helps you to be stronger. Push past, and you can move forward better and stronger than you were before. And this is honestly something that is very cute. It's very realistic. It's very natural. And I'm so glad that they did it this way. It's so cute. And yeah, this is something that they learned. And like I said, they're stronger for it. And they and this is just this will help them in the future. This will help them in in the future. Now moving on to the second story concept. Here you have a guy, Big Mac, who is in a relationship, and here you have Discord, who has never been in a relationship before. And it's two different it's two different perspectives. You have one guy who is in a relationship who wants to be in that relationship, and then you have Discord, the other guy who is not in a relationship who who believes love to be a fairy tale. He doesn't believe that it's really that that it really exists, and he's just he's just a single guy. He's totally fine with being single. Um, he's totally fine with being single and like not jumping into a relationship. And like he's pretty much telling Big Mac, you know what? Pretty much you'll have more freedom. You know, uh, like he's pretty much saying, you know, don't worry about it. Just stay single. And honestly, I can kind of relate to. I honestly can fully relate to Discord here. Because I'm a single guy, and, like, I'm the single guy, and I've seen other people go through breakups before, I, like, have relationship issues, and I'm just, I'm the guy that's sitting over in the corner, kind of grit, kind of laughing, full-on laughing, like, ha, I'm single, you're not, ha, 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 that's me, um, that's me, like, recently found out that a girl that, uh, has been going to church, not with me. She's been going to the same church that I go to. Um, I don't really know her personally, uh, but found out for two months she kept it a secret from everybody that she was pregnant. And now here's this other guy. They're not even married. He knocked her up. She's pregnant. And I was thinking, but myself, next time I see him, I ought to walk past him. I'm single. You're not. Ha 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 ha. You're screwed. Ha ha. And. <laughs> like, I, I, like I, I, I honestly, I really relate to Discord here because, like, me, I'm totally cool with being single. Um, like, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> there's a couple guys that I work with. Uh, there was, the, like, there one guy that he, two guys that I used to work with. Um, 
and they were just like so desperate like just so desperate to get a girlfriend and every time that like every time pretty much you'd see them uh they were making mentions about about a girl that they were with and i would just be like thinking to myself don't care and like i'm totally i'm the mayor of singlesville and again it, it doesn't bother me like i'm totally cool with it um like it does not bother me whatsoever and so i'm kind of like discord here you know i i really feel i really feel like discord here um, but the thing is, you know, like Discord, I'm not heartless. Like, I'm not going to tell somebody, break up with your significant other because you're better off. I'm not going to tell them that. I'm not, I would never tell somebody that because only if I saw that it was hurting them. Um, but otherwise, like, if I see that they're better in a relationship, then I'm going to try to tell them, you know, things to try to help them to help the relationship work out. But if I see that they're worse in the relationship, then I'm going to be like, dude, maybe you should get out of that. But, again, it's it was a very interesting, contra you know, a very interesting dynamic because you have two different personalities. You have Discord, who is used to being single. He's totally cool with it. That That's not me. Um, you know, just rolls, just rolls with it. And then you have Big Mac, who's been in a relationship. And here you have Discord, who is not. And he's like, I'm single. I don't have to worry about this heartache, yo. And so, like, I, like I could again, I could fully relate to Discord here, um, but like, I've never been in a relationship like that. So I like, I'm totally like Discord, man. The thing was, at one point, Discord told Sugar Bell, and honestly, I thought it, at first I did. I thought Sugar, I thought Discord had screwed up. I did. I thought Discord had screwed up. At, like Discord was the bad guy here. However, Discord. Honestly, I don't know if Discord did that as part of his setup, knowing that Big Mac would change his mind and go back to talk to her, or if he legit was just like, break up with her first and try to save yourself, you know, the heartbreak. And honestly, I can't really fault, I mean, I honestly, I can't really fault Discord for this, because there have been situations in real life, I haven't experienced it, thank God, but I know, there, I know some people have had, this, have had this before, whenever they thought somebody was going to break up with them. And so they broke up with him first. Uh, there was somebody, there was a cousin of mine once who legit, um, like, we don't talk anymore, but uh, like, I, I remember hearing from someone else that he, that this girl broke up with him. So he got back together with her just so he could break up with her and get her back. And so, you know, just so he would have, just so he would have the last laugh. And I legit know that there are some people that if they knew that someone was going to break up with them, they would break up with them first. You know, save themselves a heartache. They would call it quits as a sort of last laugh effect. Um, I can, like, legit, I know some people would do that. And I'm not going to say that that's a bad thing. I'm not going to say that's a bad thing because, I mean, if you knew, like Big Mac thought he knew, uh, like, if you legit knew, yeah, like, okay, if you legit knew it wasn't going to work out, you probably wouldn't get in. If you were intelligent, and had any common sense, you wouldn't bother getting into the relationship anyway. I myself wouldn't. Like, if I knew it wasn't going to work out, forget it, screw it. I'm not even going to bother. Discord did set it up. He broke the wagon wheel so that Sugar Bell would have to stop, so that Big Mac would be able to catch up with her. And so he did do the right thing. Like, he helped them to get back. He set that up so that that would help them. And so, yeah. But Discord, he does have a heart. Um, he does have a heart. Like I said, he's probably a lot Doctor Who. He's pro he probably has two of them. Um, but again, Discord, he's still like the single guy. He respects that Big Mac is in a relationship. He respects that Big Mac is in love. He respects that he did his own. He did it in his own way to try to help to, to, to try to help Big Mac to try to help his friend in his own special way. But Discord's still rolling with the concept of being single. He's still rolling with the ogres and ogliets game, the O and O game. Uh, you know, he's still rolling with that. He's still cool with it. And, again, it's it's really cool. It's a very interesting dynamic. It's it's very, very realistic in how that it played out. It's very natural. I, I, I really, really like that. And um, then we also have the CMCs, the third story, which is going on here, in that Sweetie Belle thought that she had a, sec a, secret, a secret admirer. And, again, it's kind of funny because here was the CMCs in the beginning wondering, like, how come we don't, you know, thinking of... Also, I have to point out... Uh, also, I have to point out, Discord's blunt belief regarding Hearts and Hoods Day 
it's very comical. It's honestly very comical because there are some people who legit believe that with Valentine's Day in real life. And I can say this much. Uh, if you're single, Valentine's Day is not a holiday. It's not. Uh, like for me, Valentine's Day, you know, I'm single. Valentine's Day is not a holiday that I celebrate. It's just not a holiday that I celebrate. The only thing that I, uh, that I like about the holiday is trying to, is, uh, hoping that I'll see some really adorable Mickey and Minnie, uh, Valentine's Day stuff. Um, but like, apart from that, it's definitely not, a it's not a holiday that, you know, I look forward to every year because, um, like whenever you're single, you know, it just, it's not a holiday. It's, you know, for people like me, uh, it's one of those holidays that kind of rubs it in your face like you're single. You know, like, rub, it rubs it in your face. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, again, here was, a sh here was the CMCs sitting here wondering about how come they didn't have any, any special Sun Pony. And, again, it, it's comical. It's comical to see this because... First, they were, I mean, this is the first time that I recall that they've ever actually wondered this. They've ever actually thought this. And so, one, it used to be their C, it used to be their cutie marks. Now they're wondering, now they're thinking about boys. Second thing is it kind of come full circle. This kind of shows more maturity, I think, for me. More like they're approaching their teen years or, may, heck, maybe, maybe they might already be in their teen years, maybe 13 or 14 here or something. And so now they are kind of thinking about guys, you know, um, uh, possibly. But again, it's an interesting thing that first they were wondering about their cutie marks. Now they're thinking about guys. That's why I said take it one step at a time, girls. If, like, if uh, Applejack and Big Mac knew that, okay, it was really just Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo that was wondering about that. Um, but again, the thing that was really interesting here whenever Sweetie Belle found, thought that she had a secret ad admirer. And I th honestly thought to myself, oh boy, how are they gonna, how are they gonna do this? What, what, how are they gonna do it whenever they think that it's Big Mac? Like, I could just imagine a scenario, uh, like, I didn't know how they were gonna play that out. I could just imagine maybe it's like a scenario where they find out that they think it's Big Mac and Apple Bloom, like, you see a close-up of her face, of her eyes being big, and she's like, my brother? Um, but they didn't go that far with the story, and, yeah, uh, which is okay. Um, but it was interesting because the CMCs, uh, I really enjoyed that segment whenever the CMCs were trying to find, trying to go around, trying to ask, trying to hint to different ponies about who might be Sweebell's secret 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 admirer. They talked to uh, Featherweight. No, uh, this other little pony whose name escapes me. It's something a Pip 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 Squeak Pip Squeak. I think it is. Um, like they talked to him, <clears throat> and I love how blunt Apple Bloom just, just just was with it. Like, do you have a crush on my best friend? And then we, the cool thing they did bring uh, Button Mash back. Which I thought it was interesting that it wasn't Sweetie Belle that was asking him. Probably, I, can, I mean, like, prob they probably intended not to have Sweetie Belle um, do that. But, like, they did show Button Mash. And, like, he did not speak. Um, he just kind of ran away quickly. And I thought, and also that moment whenever Sweetie Belle is asking Simpson Snails. And she's legit like, I am not interested in you guys at all. And she's like, please say no, please say no, please say no. She legit had no interest in these guys whatsoever. Like, she was like, please no, I will go jump off a bridge if you say yes. It was hilarious. And so we had these three different stories, like, coming together. And <clears throat> and there was also a reference. Big Mac made the mention that maybe, he made the mention that maybe, he wants pretty he but he basically said maybe talking got him in trouble before and that's why he doesn't talk so much anymore i don't know i'm thinking back to um whenever big mac and uh, applejack were teenagers and applejack uh big mac was more talkative back then i'm kind of thinking at that moment maybe you know, like maybe that could be a reference to that, or it could just be that 
you know, maybe it could be reference to what happened in, in this episode. But, yeah, again, uh, the CMCs found out, and it was and it was also interesting at that little moment too. Whenever the CMCs are like, you know, Ap Sweetie Belle's just sitting here feeling sorry for sorry for herself because she doesn't have a special sun pony. She couldn't find who it was, but then she realized, you know what? She doesn't need a special sun pony. She's got her best friends, and I mean they they have a lot of fun together, and you know th there'll be plenty of time for a relationship later on. You know that's not something you want to rush into. It's, not advise. I mean, any common sense, sane individual will tell you don't rush into a relationship. Um, but she realized, you know what? She doesn't need a, need a, a special sun pony to be happy. You know, she she she's happy right now. That's what matters. And you know, heck, maybe a relationship might happen in time. But right now, just you know, enjoy being happy as is. You know, that's not something she needs to rush into. And she realized that. And. So, again, that was also cool, and <clears throat> we also, of course, found out Discord does have a heart, and he was able to set things up, and he still enjoys playing with Spike and Big Mac, which is also really cool. But again, I absolutely love this episode. It was very cute, very sweet, and I absolutely adore this episode. It's so cute, so freaking cute. I absolutely love this episode. It's just freaking adorable. And going over a few different aspects, there are a few different things that I want to talk about in the episode itself that uh, caught that was very, very interesting to see. First off, Derpy as a male mayor. I mean, now, the fandom has imagined for a long time that Derpy was a male mayor, but here, you know, we saw it once before, Derpy pretty much working for UPS, United Pony Service, and here she is wearing her wearing the brown outfit, which is really adorable on her, like, it really does look cute on her. And then we see these other characters here in the background too, which are, which are adorable. I love this mare here in the front with the shorter cut hair. I, I love I, she's really cute. And then this one over here with kind of the like like, like a like a strawberry colored hair, also really cute. And then this one over on the right too with the shorter hair, kind of like Coco Pomel, also cute. Um, oh, just, I think my favorite out of these three would be this blue one here with the with kind of the kind of the hair spikes in spikes in in the back. That like she of these three, she she she's my favorite pony on the right over here. Second favorite pony right here on the left. Third favorite, but yeah, very very cute. Love these designs for these characters. Like they're just adorable. And, 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 and again, especially this one here with the blue hair. I just I love her design. She's just very cute. And some different things to go over, of course, with the episode. Uh, we also have these other characters here. Uh, we have this other mare here in the front. We see her talking to another guy. Uh, here, <clears throat> and we see this other pony up there on the upper left corner with the fluffy cotton candy colored hair. Very cute. Then we see this little touchy nose, this little nose boop, this little touchy nose uh, between these two right here on the right, which is adorable. Um, and then these two here, these two Pegasi, which is flying together, which is very, very cute. And then we see this. Oh, and then we see uh, this guy hanging a bow, and we see Cheer Lee. That's interesting. Now notice that. A few different characters. Here, uh, we see this other character over here on the left. Uh, this little couple here, which is cute. And she's hold this, this mare's holding a balloon. We see this other guy in the back with the black hair. And this purple uh, pony with the pink hair ta uh, talking to him. Oh, uh, also really cute. We see Rose Luck and Daisy, I think it is, talking together. And we see these two guys stand, uh, you know, sitting here together as well. Also, this little moment here with Discord introducing this bony female character here. That's awesome. That's awesome. I like her design. That's awesome. That's also, that's really cool. And of course, we got some another more adorableness with oh my gosh, with Lyra and Bon Bon. So cute! I mean, oh my gosh. And then there's a nuzzle. There's a freaking nuzzle between these two. And it's also freaking cute. I mean, it's adorable, that little nuzzle with the hug. I mean, just look up this. You cannot tell me this is not freaking adorable. This is, this is blood turning to honey. Adorable. And of course, Maud and Mudbriar holding hooves together while we see a stick and Boulder. <laughs> I forgot the stick's name. But again, that's cute. Again, we see this little setup with this, uh, with these two characters here in the back and the guy looks like Dr. Hooves. We see Rose and Daisy or Lily, and we all see these other two characters right here. 
I know it's Cranky and Matilda, but that's like the old couple romance, and I'm just not going to comment on that. And I, I, I have to say, it's kind of, you know, <clears throat> this moment whenever the whenever the cart breaks down, and <clears throat> uh, Sugar Bell tries to fix it, but she falls down into the mud, and Big Mac is there to pull her up. Like, he's there to pull her up, and, like, it's, you could say that that is kind of a bit of a cliche thing, but it's adorable. It's really, really adorable, and I love how that, how that, how that that played out. It was really, really cute. I also adore how that Sugar Bell told Big Mac that she would not break up with him, and then we got this little nuzzle. I mean, look at this, this little adorable little cheek and nose nuzzle. This is just so cute. Ah, oh, this is so cute! Oh my gosh, this episode is so freaking cute. And, like, this is, honestly, this is just adorable. I mean, I, there's a, for me personally, like, I see a connection, personally, between Big Mac and Sugar Bell, and Pear Butter and Bright Mac. You know, like, just how that the care, how, whenever I think about the episode with Pear Butter and Bright Mac, I think about how they were. Big Mac and Sugar Bell are kind of following in in those in following in those hoofsteps. Like they are kind of doing exactly what Big Mac's parents, what Pear Butter and Bright Mac probably did do, might have done. I mean, here you have Big Mac who works on a farm. You have uh, Sugar Bell who works in a bakery, and she'll be spending more time in Ponyville now, also because her cousin is going to be taking care of the shop, and she'll be spending more time in Ponyville now apprenticing with Mrs. Cake, which is awesome. She'll be spending more time in Ponyville now a few days a week, which is really, really adorable. And then, of course, we got this little moment here. Crap, I, I honestly tried to pause there. That, that was just too cute. And then we got this little moment where Big Mac kisses her forehead, and she's just, like, smiling, that little bitty smile. It's just so freaking cute. I absolutely adore this. And then we also have something very, very adorable here. Whenever he tells her he wants to surprise her, like, he wants to take her back to the barn and show her the surprise. Like, Big Mac, a strong, like, he's the, he's big, he's strong. He literally picks her up and sets her on the cart. And, I mean, he sets her on the cart and hooks himself up to it, and it's just so cute, like, she's just sitting there all giddy, and giggles as they start back to Ponyville, and also there's that little bitty snort that she does too, and Big Mac tells her that it's adorable, I mean, like, th th this couple is just so cute, this is just so warm, um, and, and again, I think about Pear Butter and Bright Mac, I think about those two, uh, with Big Mac and, and Sugar Bell, I think about that, and, like, it's just, this, honestly, this couple is just so warm, so loving, so adorable, and it's just such a beautiful dynamic between these two. It's just so warm, it's so sweet, and it's just absolutely cute. I absolutely love it to death. I mean, it's just so dang adorable. And that little moment where they're riding back into Ponyville um, together, there's just such a warm dynamic between these two. I mean, it's just so adorable. It's just such a warm dynamic um between these two they're just absolutely adorable together and they're just so warm and just so sweet and i absolutely love this and like i said i honestly want more episodes that focus on big mac and sugar bell um like honestly i want that to be the next wedding no joke i want that to be the next wedding you know already we had um we had cadence and Shining at the end of season two, we had Cranky and Matilda. I want Big Mac and Sugar Bell to, the, to be the next couple to, couple to tie the knot. I want them to be the next couple to tie the knot. And what I want to see, I want to see them, like, honestly, if I could do an episode of MLP, that's something that I would do. I would have Big Mac propose to Sugar Bell probably at the tree where that... Pear Butter and Bright Mac uh, made, and I would have them get married right there at that same tree. I would have, and get married by Mayor Mayor, and I would have them get married right there. But again, 
That's what I personally would do. I like I, I, I would totally have 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 I would totally have them get hitched and have them get married right where Pear Butter and Brighton Bat got married. Um, but again, this is definitely one of my most favorite episodes of season eight. It's so cute. It's so sweet. It's so warm, and it's just freaking adorable. And like I said, I really want to see more of Big Mac and uh, of Sugar Bell too. I mean, it's just so cute. Um, but again, I, I, I absolutely adored this episode. It's so warm, it's so loving, it's so sweet. And like I I'm a total sucker for the for like the pardon me, for the adorable cartoon romance. I'm like I'm a total sucker for it. I couldn't be uh, any more of a sucker if I if I was a vacuum cleaner. Um But again, I, I, I absolutely love this episode. It's so cute, so sweet. But again, thank you. Everybody that worked on this episode, thank you so much for so, for a very adorable, very cute, very sweet episode. Thank you all so much that worked on this episode. Thank you so much for the deliverance, for doing this episode the way that you did. It's so cute. It's so warm. There's also some heartbreaking moments in it, too, but, like, happy ending. I love happy endings. I'm a happy ending guy. Uh, I remember uh, Walt, uh, people used to say, people used to, or Walt, Walt Disney used to say that, that about himself, that he was a happy ending guy. And I really relate to Walt Disney on that because I, because I love happy endings. And um, so, again, very cute, very sweet. Thank you all so much for all the hard work and effort for, every, for, for doing this episode the way, the, way that, the, way, the way that you did. Thank you all so much. And also, thank you guys again for joining me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know again what you think in the comments. Thank you again for joining me, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video that I do. Take care.